Hepinizi saygıyla selamlıyorum. Birleşime 20 dakika ara veriyorum. This video is brought to you by Pure Talk. Brought to you by Pure Talk. You want a killer Black Friday deal? I got one for you. Free Moto G 5G phone from Pure Talk. No gimmicks, no trade-in necessary. Just sign up for Pure Talk's unlimited talk, unlimited text, and 15 gig data plan for just 35 bucks, and get the Moto G 5G phone for free. But here's the deal. You need to move fast because these phones will be gone by the end of the month. So if your current phone is on life support, upgrade for free with Pure Talk. Enjoy two-day battery life, an exceptional quad pixel camera, and a whole lot more. Just dial pound 250 and say keyword Brandon Tatum to speak with Pure Talk's U.S. customer service team. They'll make switching so easy and will make sure that you get your new phone. Remember, Pure Talks gives you America's most dependable 5G network at half the price. So make the switch today. Dial pound 250. That is pound 250. Say keyword Brandon Tatum to claim your free Moto G 5G phone with qualifying plan. Pure Talk. Simply smarter wireless. This Turkish lawmaker decided to challenge the God of Israel on national TV. And as soon as he got done challenging the God of Israel, he died from a heart attack on the spot. You can't tell me that's a coincidence. That the man is talking crazy about Yahweh and said that Israel will suffer the wrath of Allah and died. Don't believe me, wrote a clip. Kurtulsanız, vicdan azabından kurtulamayacaksınız. Vicdan azabından kurtulsanız, tarihin azabından kurtulamayacaksınız. Tarihin azabından kurtulsanız Allah'ın gazabından kurtulamayacaksınız. Hepinizi saygıyla selamlıyorum. Birleşime 20 dakika ara veriyorum. I would venture to say Maybe this is one of those biblical examples where you find out which God is real, right? <laughs> you challenge Yahweh to lift up the wrath of Allah and you die. That to me tells me that maybe just maybe Yahweh is the true God and Allah is not. Maybe. Some people may say he was a prophet and he gave his last speech and then Allah took him to, to meet the virgins. But I would venture off to say that that's kind of that's kind of serious. For you to challenge Israel in a way like that and after you make the declaratory challenge to say that they cannot escape the torment of history and the wrath of Allah and he go block and the spirit left him it reminds me of uh ananias and sapphira when they were talking to the apostles and they supposedly sold something but they lied and they didn't sell something and he said you didn't lie to me but you lied to the holy ghost and it says that the ghost the spirit left them like they died right on the spot for lying to God. Now, I know a lot of people lie to God all day long and they don't die, but this was one of those situations where I think people need to start paying attention. God sent these people back to Israel. The things that the Jews are experiencing and the things that the Jews have accomplished are prophetic things. You cannot stop the Jewish people for returning back to the land that God had already made out for them. And anybody getting in the way of that, I think they are going to face the wrath of God. That's why nobody's been able to defeat Israel since they've been in the region, since they made their comeback. 
And I honestly believe it. And people may say I'm biased because I believe the Bible, but it's their land. And they have made the land flourish. Now, is every Jewish person a good person? Not, no. Is every Jew following the Torah? No. Some of them probably out there cutting up. But generically speaking or generally speaking, when you talk about God's promise to certain people that uphold his laws and principles, there is a reward. And that land belongs to them. And it's just, that it's just I, I don't know what else to say about it. And that's why I'm in support of Israel, because I know what God said about Israel. And I know how God has secured that place. The battle of Armageddon is supposed to happen in Israel. The end days, you know, the Mount Moriah, the place where Jesus was crucified, all that stuff, that was in Jerusalem. All these things that you read in the Bible, if you're a Christian, if you ain't a Christian, don't worry about it. Just get to the next segment. If you're a Christian, you, you, you would understand the historical context of that region. Noah, King David, Solomon, Ezekiel, the prophets, I mean, all of the prophets. All of these people were there. Biblical history is explained right there. The wars and battles that are mentioned in the Bible, look, they happen right there in that region. And you and you go on to today and you somehow think somebody worshiping another God is going to control the region and overtake the history. It's just not going to happen. And let's not be confused. Allah is a different God than Yahweh. People try to say it's not, but you're, you are representing a total different God. It's the same with all the other different religions. Like, you can decide who's right or wrong, but just be fair about saying that you guys are believing in a different God. Even Christians versus Jews, many of these people are, they don't have a relationship with God. They think they do. Some of them are keeping the traditions, but the relationship is not there. Jesus was telling people this, that many of you guys, you, you don't even know God because if you knew God, you would know that I was the son of God. It's, I'm paraphrasing what he's saying. And he said, you worship the devil who's your father. And they didn't get it. They wanted to kill him. They, they couldn't handle the truth. If you're a Christian, that's what you believe. If you're Jewish, you believe that the Christians worship a different God. Let's keep it real. Let's just keep it real with each other. You believe that the, the Christians are, are, are making Jesus out to be something he's not. And everything that Jesus allegedly claimed God said is a lie. So whatever belief system that Christians have about God today is fraudulent. Therefore, if they had a real relationship, they would know that their that the Jewish religion is true. That's how Jews feel in a vacuum. And Christians feel the same way about the Jews. The Muslims feel the same way about the Christians and the Jews. You go on and go on. I just feel like I need to say that because people get things conflated. I stand for Israel. I believe that God has put these people that he chose from the very beginning to be in his land. That doesn't mean that I agree with how they view Jesus. I think that they are incorrect. And I'm telling you, when I went to Israel, I could see it as clear as the noonday sun. Because Jesus was saying all of these things about how they're practicing religion. It's just religious. Don't stand on the corner and pray like the Pharisee that's looking for attention and all this other stuff. And when I went to Israel, I, I saw a lot of the Jewish things being heavily religious and not re relational. It's like, yeah, you picked up the thing, you wiped the bowl off, you did all these laws and stuff, but where is the fruit? Where is Where are you getting your morals from? You, you, you think you're good because you can recite the Torah but how do you treat your neighbors? 
Hold the phone. I'll be back at the break.